Welcome everyone to today's webinar, How Keck Medicine of USC is Leveraging Conversational AI and Voice-Driven Tech for Better Patient Access and ROI. On behalf of Becker's Healthcare, thank you for joining us. Before we begin, I'll walk through a few quick housekeeping instructions. If at any time you have trouble with the video or audio, try refreshing your browser. You can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar by typing them into the Q&A box you see on your screen. All submitted questions will be shared with our sponsor following the presentation. With that, I am pleased to welcome today's speakers, Patsy Regan, Access Center Operations Director at Keck Medicine of USC, Jennifer Preciado, Operations Manager at Keck Medicine of USC, Scott Dontremont, Chief Revenue Officer at Parlance, and Sheila Kelly, Regional Healthcare Account Executive from Parlance. Patsy, Jennifer, Scott, and Sheila, thank you so much for being here today. I'll now turn the floor over to you. Uh, thanks, and thanks everybody for joining. Patsy and Jennifer, would you mind giving all of us uh, a high-level look at your day-to-day -day responsibilities? Sure, thanks, Scott. As the operations director, my focus is on the strategy and optimization of the Access Center here at Keck Medicine of USC. Uh, that ranges from growing partnerships with our clinics to investing in new technologies to ensuring that we have the right resources to service our patients. And Jennifer, how about you? Yeah, thank you again for having us. Uh, in my current role as operations manager, I oversee the success of the Access Center with all um, of our personnel, all 140 agents our nine supervisors, and day-to-day, -day, it is my job to ensure that all the staff can fulfill uh, their role to deliver quality patient care, along with any HR deliverables for the staff, analyzing performance optimization, and any opportunities within our department. Great, thanks. Patsy, could you zoom out just a little bit and speak to Keck Medicine as an enterprise for a minute? Sure, so Keck Medicine of USC, uh, we have about 8,500 plus employees in the institution. We have four hospitals in the enterprise with almost 1,000 beds total. We also service our patients on the ambulatory side with over 80 satellite locations and clinics. Thanks, Patsy. Can we talk a little bit about the contact center itself? Certainly. So the access center here at Keck Medicine of USC that's just about when we're fully staffed, 140, uh, 140 145 agents working and, and taking phone calls from our patients and their loved ones. The Access Center uh, provides support to 80 to 85% of our specialties here at Keck Medicine of USC. Uh, the services we provide range from scheduling appointments to after hours paging support, we offer template maintenance to our providers. We have a robust nurse triage program uh, here at Keck Medicine of USC and um, an RX refill program, which is one of the, the newer programs that we've initiated to help manage our call volume. The leadership team in the Access Center is also growing and really, uh, I'm really proud to get to work with them. Uh, Jennifer is a member of the team. We have a robust operations team as well as support who uh, provide us our data analytics, support us in technology, as well as a, a robust QA program, which is supported by our training team. I know that the turnaround project has been underway for quite some time, that it started back in 2020. And Sheila, both you and Jennifer were around back then. Sheila, could you speak a little bit to what was happening when you first engaged with Keck and Jennifer, maybe you can add what it was like for you as well. Uh, sure, I met Keck probably initially back in maybe 2017, the start of 2018, um, and was in communication with them as they were starting to really analyze performance of the contact center then. Um, they were dealing with some complaints from providers and from patients. And then Parlance was engaged to do a professional services uh, engagement there. And we, we were able to do some call recording and analysis of whole calls recorded. And in that, we kind of confirmed what 
what the consultants at the time were saying. And that is that better communication was needed between the clinics and the contact center. Agents just really needed a lot of empowerment. They needed better tools. They needed, again, that better communication um, and information flow with the clinics. Um, and they really were being asked to do a lot of kind of wasted work, uh, which we'll talk about a lot of that around call navigation, which is where parlance comes in. So when I met them and this whole project was getting launched, these were issues that were talked about all the time, um, how to solve these problems. And I, and I know Jen was in the, Jennifer was in the heart of a lot of those conversations. Yeah, Sheila, definitely um, such a different picture in 2021. We had our daily average volume anywhere from seven to 8,000 calls being answered by one group of agents. Uh, those agents would then triage our phone calls and get them to their desired destination. But if you can think about it, we had people who had very quick requests, like what is the number for medical records? What's the fax number for medical records? Mixed in with patients who wanted to schedule their appointments for multiple locations for multiple providers. And so they were all sitting in one queue answered by one group of agents. And so I remember having to think about what we can do to optimize our agents, our resources, get them the help that they need, and in return, give back to our clinics to let them know what our callers were actually calling about at that time. Um, I know knowing all of this, that our guiding principles for these projects was redesigning a navigation for our callers that they can use their voice uh, to choose different paths. Jen, you guys were tackling a lot all at the same time. I know there were a lot of different platforms that were all part of the turnaround. I remember back when we when we launched it and there were many of us on the call trying to all work towards the same thing. Can you talk a little bit to what it was like to sort of do everything all at once? Yeah, great question, uh, Scott, and uh, daunting probably to say the least. And many of those conversations uh, were thought about, about what our current state was, how we were going to improve. And I remember the project having so many pillars of what we needed to do for our patients, and, and they were all standing up right at the same time. Um, it was, it was, it was definitely one of those things that you need to pause um, in between all of the chaos and recognize and sort of stand back and see what was important to you. Uh, I can definitely remember one uh, one instance that I, I think that is so important to share with all of you was that we were in the midst of an IVR discussion and we were really going back and forth on our parlance build and overwhelmingly thinking about every scenario that came in, whether it be a doctor with double, two doctors in the same department with the same last name, um, or was it, you know, people didn't know otolaryngology as otolaryngology, they knew it as head and neck surgery. And so I remember thinking about all of those different scenarios and what are our patients going to do in that scenario? And our parlance partner at the time stepped back and told me, well, what do they do today? What do you guys do today? And I remember thinking about that and thinking about how in a, in a big project like this, we constantly think of that 80-20 rule, right? And, and sometimes it's so hard to get past that 20% rule. And in that conversation, I realized that our parlance partners can help us with those 20%. What happens today is somebody gets asked a question, right? If there's two doctors in one department, we get asked the question for which department. And uh, we can do that today utilizing our parlance services and, and the patient can speak that all by using their voice. Uh, Jen, part of the big go live was um, introducing parlance to answer the phone. And, and you've touched on this a little bit already, but um, I've always liked the way you speak about this in the context of the overall patient journey. And, um, you know, what was that like? Just talk a little bit about that experience and sort of the insight it's giving you and what it's doing to the patient journey. Uh, with the implementation of parlance and callers wanting, um, they can use their voice to navigate everything that they wanted through the system, whether it be to cancel an appointment or to speak to the doctor's coordinator. They were empowered to speak their request uh, to get them to their destination. And that ultimately 
uh, that ultimately reduced uh, the frustration that we often saw with our patients having to wait in several different hold pulls. This was a huge change for our patient journey. Um, as far as our operations, we were actually finally able to analyze where the issues were and pinpoint to the exact moment and whether it be a question or a part of the piece of uh, a part of their journey as a patient and understand how we can help them. So, of course, in the in the voice channel where we're still seeing 85 percent of the interactions in healthcare, the start of every patient journey involves that phone call and that navigation, getting the person to the right place, access to the right resource. So it's critically important to make that work. And that's where we spent a lot of time with Keck initially. But now we've been able to move on and take on more more of the routine task that the center is faced with with doing every day. Patsy, can you speak a little bit to some of the other activities and, and places where Parlance has been able to help? Yep, sure. So prior to the, the go live with Parlance, our patients were calling our agents and the agents would then be transferring them to other agents to help them. The IVR navigation and routing that Parlance introduced to us has helped to mitigate that such that when you call a phone number of the access center, you are able to self-service voice your request and get to the right place without having to go through multiple agents. It's also been very helpful for our agents through the verification process. The IVR verifies our patient's identity for us and it really does shorten the amount of time that we have to spend um, asking those questions of our patients. And we know that it improves the patient experience as well because a big complaint that patients have is, I already gave you that information, why are you asking me again? So to be able to have the IVR collect that information for us so that we're not having to ask the identifier questions is very helpful. We also recently introduced through the IVR confirming and canceling of appointments. So when patient Smith calls, the IVR recognizes that patient Smith has appointments coming up and is able to ask the patient, Mr. Smith, are you calling to confirm or cancel your, your appointment on November 6th? And with that technology, the patient can self-service. What that does for the agent is it gives them the ability to focus on those more complex calls and they don't have to focus on easier calls that can be self-service. We also have future state AI coming with our work with Parlance. Uh, we're going to work on rescheduling appointments as well as being able to answer frequently asked questions. We're also going to add more appointment types to our self-servicing confirm cancel appointment module that we've enacted with Parlance. And I'd like to say that um, for the audience, just to, uh, again, put this in context, Parlance is integrated with the Cisco PCC system, and um, which is in turn uh, also with Salesforce and with uh, Cerner, the electronic health record here, so that Parlance is verifying the patient and um, also moving to the agent's screen if the call needs to go to an agent that this is patient Sheila Kelly, she's been verified, she's calling about an appointment. Or keeping that patient inside that IVR all the way through to canceling or confirming an appointment. And at the end of each of those canceling confirms, they have the opportunity to speak with an agent. Um, so a lot of just being flexible about patient need and where they are in the conversation so they can pivot at any moment back to the resources they need. And when that call goes to an agent, that information to give that call context is there for the agent. Great, great. And what you can see here is that all of those small pieces of work that are deflected really add up. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing things by the tens of thousands. And when you do that and you save 20 seconds here and 30 seconds there and a, and a minute in another place, it starts to be significant labor 
um, and really significant opportunity that's created for the agent to spend real time on people that really need help rather than somebody with a routine question. So Patsy, you talked about some other things that you'll be doing as time goes on and we continue to partner together. Could you speak a little bit to your process and how you go about deciding which things you do next? Yeah, sure. So uh, members of my leadership team and I meet on a weekly basis with our parlance partners. We discuss opportunities that Parlance has identified with other academic medical centers, other call centers as well. We review the data um, on a weekly basis and we get feedback from our partners at Parlance to say, maybe we could tweak uh, this. Maybe you could add um, this particular word to your IVR because we've noticed here at Parlance that you have a lot of patients calling for X, Y, and Z. So we, we do take that information that we get from Parlance. It's not the type of relationship where they installed the software and now we don't talk to them anymore. Um, it, it really is an ongoing partnership to continue to grow and massage everything that we're learning. So it's, it's a constant conversation on how we can improve. We also introduced other softwares uh, in July of 2021. So we lean on our Salesforce CRM to help us to understand why our patients are calling. What is it that they're calling for? We take that information and we're able to provide metrics to our executive level leadership, letting them know the types of calls that we're getting and whether we're hitting first call resolution, which is a metric that we'll get into in the future. Right. Great. Great. And I think part of your guys' success has just been that analytical outlook that you guys have had. I know that you track a lot of different information and I'm sure everyone listening to our webcast today would be interested to know some of the KPIs that you're looking at uh, as you make decisions and kind of evaluate success. Sure, definitely. Uh, we do look at the performance metrics, of course. So hold time, service level, uh, those are important metrics. We want to make sure that we're answering our calls as quickly as we possibly can, Scott. Uh, but additionally, we are also looking at those quality metrics. So first call resolution, uh, one call resolution. We have, a, as I mentioned earlier, a robust QA program with our training team where we are looking to see are our patients getting the five-star service that we um, provide here at Keck Medicine of USC. Just talking about the then versus the now, I, I started with the company. Um, next week will be my two-year anniversary with Tech Medicine of USC. So I came in after all of these technologies went live. But as I was building partnerships with my clinic leadership teams, I was receiving feedback from them that they would say, you know, we used to get so many patient complaints. I was on hold with the Access Center for about 20 minutes before I actually connected with someone. Those days are gone. We are not hearing those complaints anymore. Uh, we are getting to our patients much more quickly. And not only are we getting to our patients much more quickly, but once we get them on the line, we're providing them a more qualitative um, experience than previously. That's great. Congratulations on your upcoming anniversary. Thank you. And th these are some other, these are some specific KPIs that are pretty dramatic improvements in the, the patient experience that that you guys are able to deliver. It's always nice to have some numbers behind the anecdotes of, hey, you know, it's it's way better than it used to be. Well, how, mu how much better is it really? And you guys are not only tracking uh, internal metrics, but Prescani is somebody that you rely on to kind of check in with to make sure that the service is headed in the right direction. And I can see that you've made some fantastic strides forward there. Yeah, thanks, Scott, for that. We're uh, we're really proud of the improvements that we've seen in our metrics. First, taking a look at first call resolution, which we measure as, was I able to resolve your call in the access center without having to transfer you to the clinic or send a message in the EMR to the clinic. Um, you know, prior to our go live, we weren't even really able to measure 
first call resolution. But since we've gone live with our technologies um, as of July 2021, we have seen so many improvements um, in first call resolution, not only because the technology can help us measure it, but because the technology is giving us information on where we're not resolving the calls. And then we are able to tackle those issues with our clinic partners. The Prescati patient experience information also does speak for itself, but just to, to highlight it and say what a, what a wonderful experience it is to be able to um, give our patients the, the satisfaction of making those calls easier. Patsy, you mentioned service level. Can you speak a little to some of the different elements that impact service level? Yeah, sure. So our team is constantly looking at ways to improve our our service levels or our, our speed to answer, shortening that hold time for our callers as much as we can. And the, the four key drivers that we look at to improve our service level are productivity, handle time, staffing, and volume. Um, in terms of how technologies have helped us, uh, the volume really um the technologies has helped us to decrease the number of calls that we're getting. I know we briefly touched earlier on some of the um, some of the technologies that we have introduced, uh, one of them being Active Directory that we introduced last year. Uh, so instead of our agents getting a call from a patient saying, would you please connect me to medical records? The patient can now say medical records. And that call goes directly to our medical records department. So number one, that reduces our volume of calls that we have to handle. And number two, it satisfies the patient because the patient is able to bypass having to speak to one person just to get to another person. So our technologies are really helping with our volume. Um, staffing, you know, we're constantly in our, our access center leadership meetings looking at how to improve um, the the attrition and the shrinkage and the, the vacancies that are impacting our staffing. Uh, for productivity, our technologies uh, are able to help us to now measure more specifically our agents out of rotation. So we expect that our agents are in rotation 80% of their shift. And when they are not, um, the techno technologies that we use are helping us to understand why they might be out of rotation and we can work more closely with them to get them back into that rotation so that they're helping our patients. A big one that our technologies have helped us with is handle time. Uh, so obviously longer calls means um, lower service level because we are on calls and having to service a patient for much longer than we would like to be able to. So handle time, is improved by our technologies. As we saw in a previous slide, we're able to reduce um, a lot of, we, we are able to reduce significant amount of hours per month in our handle time just by having the patient verify their information at the start of the call through the IVR before they actually get connected to the agents. Again, our teams have been working together for a long time and of course, launching in July was just the very beginning. There's sort of a process in a way that we interact together to, to kind of uh, have some continuous improvement that we've kind of alluded to. Could you speak a little bit to what the process is and how we go about working together on a, on a weekly and monthly basis? Yeah, thank you, Scott, for that question. And it is one of those things that that post-implementation you constantly think about is a managed service that follows. Uh, Patsy mentioned earlier that we definitely were in need of something that continues on a relation to build, a relationship to build on. And with the IVR services, we are in need, uh, particularly in our patient population serving Los Angeles County, uh, we're able to pick up on the different uh, tunings uh, during our sessions, uh, during our picking up on different language dialects and helping our patient journey. Uh, one really great thing about a managed service is it's also able to tell us a precise location where our patients are getting stuck at or where they're really doing well at. And so if there's a question that they're really doing well at, 
we want to replicate that in our different uh, in our different IVR menus. If there is something that they're getting stuck at, we know exactly what the question is and how we can help them move past that. All of this is happening during weekly meetings where we discuss all of this and celebrate our wins and, and make changes to those things that are def just definitely not working for us. That's that's great. And kind of behind the scenes, not something we speak to you a lot about, but our technology platform is built to support that kind of process. We're experts at what's called named entity recognition, which allows us to pick things like proper names and places out of the conversation and tune to it phonetically. So there's no accident that we can do a good job with dialects, uh, help clear up when somebody's rolling an R, that's that sort of thing. And, it, and it's an important part of how we support our customers. So name recognition is just so incredibly important in healthcare in general, and especially at a place as big as Keck Medicine with so many providers um, who and with so much such a variety of names. Um, we speak to a lot of access centers uh, and their leaders around the country. Um, that are at kind of a different place in terms of the role of the access center in the larger enterprise. And a, a pretty consistent theme is sort of that getting buy-in, educating leadership uh, across the network of care around the importance of um, the contact center and supporting better practices in the contact center, and frankly, investing in the contact center. I've always been really impressed with the work you've done in these just about two years since you've been here um, around building that trust across your network of care. And I know you've created a program around that. Can you talk to the audience about your approach there? Yep, certainly. Thanks, Sheila, for that. Mm -hmm. So about almost two years ago now, uh, we did kick off a program called the Practice Partnership Program, or P3. And basically what it is, is it's a time for us to meet on a monthly basis with each of the specialties and multi-specialty clinics that we support here in the Access Center. So what we do in those meetings is we, first of all, go over the monthly metrics. So we've been able to increase our transparency with our clinic partners to say, here is how we're performing, here's how we're doing well, and here are the opportunities where we need to work to improve our service levels. Not only do we share the service level information, but we also talk about first call resolution, the quality metrics that matter. Once we get connected to the patient, how are we helping these clinics patients out? And how are we reducing the amount of work that we're sending to the clinics? So I mentioned earlier, the FCR information that we collect through our CRM, that information we take to the monthly P3s and we talk about the information with our partners. And we say, you know, we noticed that so-and-so, um, we're, we're not able to get a hold of that person right now. And they'll say, oh, that person is on a leave of absence. Sorry, we didn't tell you. But this is information that's help for, uh, helpful for us to get so that we can improve our um, relationships and, and look at the opportunities for improvement. The, the P3s are exciting, they're engaging. We have members of the administrative team that join, nurses are there, and we're able to partner as well with physicians. So we do have physician partnership on these meetings, which is really exciting because they're able to engage and tell us Here's what our patients are saying to us when we're actually meeting with them. Yeah, and one thing that really strikes me about this story is how in the past, um, when I first met Keck, you did, the contact center um, wanted to be transparent but didn't have access to the data they needed that would be informative to the practices. And right. that would be useful to the practices to help you improve your operations. So. That, that seems like when we talk about the big turnaround, that's definitely a 180 from the olden days, for sure. Yep, definitely have improved that transparency, which also helps us to build trust. Yeah. Uh, on on the, the point about technology, um, because we've built that trust, because we've gotten the buy-in from our clinics, 
we're able to work more closely with them to educate their patients on things like the IVR system. So they're able to help the patients to navigate as well. Jennifer, I know that you have done a lot of the same work to build trust and transparency with the agents in the center. Could you tell us a little bit how you've gone about doing that? What's that process been? Um, and what's been important about that? With the change in all of the platforms in 2021 um, and the onboarding of, of the different technologies, change management was such a big part for that trust um, and, and communication to our staff. Uh, one way that we have encouraged our staff to embrace this change is to actually go through our system just as a patient would, just take the same patient journey. Um, and so their understanding of how a patient gets to them will help them to educate them if they do have a patient who is lost, if they do have a patient who made a wrong turn somewhere. And so it's absolutely crucial that they understand the system as much as the patients do so that they can guide them, uh, that they, they can guide the patients as they they come through. And so, Scott, we've really had to focus on training them on our IVR system. We've really had to uh, train them and focus on if a patient comes in and says, I took a wrong turn somewhere, that they know exactly where they took the wrong turn at and they can tell them in the next, the next time you call, you can actually do this, um, but I can help you. And so that's really helped with the change management for them to embrace the different systems and for them to help out our patients ultimately in their experience. Um, another thing I just wanted to touch on really quickly was that with the implementation of Salesforce, our patient, our excuse me, our agents are so aware of the of what the patients have just gone through. They know that they have verified. They know that that they are choosing a new patient, so they can even open with a greeting that says "Welcome to Keck Medicine of USE," because the IVR has prompted Salesforce to let them know that this is a brand new patient calling in, or they can say "Welcome back" because they know that they're an existing patient that has already come in and. So it's really changed our patient's experience for the better. That's great. That's really great to hear about. And we're really excited about how we leverage conversational AI to do even more for, for your patients uh, as, as part of your team. With always keeping in mind the idea that the more that automation can do to support simple and routine tasks, the more your folks can do to support people that really need help. It's healthcare, and it shouldn't be 100% automated ever, really. There should always be the opportunity for people to get to the, the kind of resources that they need to be successful and feel cared for. And we think by adding more uh, automation and technology so that people can accomplish uh, routine tasks in a routine way, we're going to be able to be even better partners and more successful together on down the road. Jill, you and I often meet with contact center leaders who think that the task of automation is overwhelming, that they have to start big and study, and there can be a level of kind of analysis paralysis before they start and make some real practical uh, short-term immediate improvements. That's right. I mean, I, like you say, I've been in so many conversations where we're at the start of what promises to be a multi-year um, process of analysis and identification of areas to look at, et cetera. But um, and I, I think, you know, our time in the pandemic really helped a little bit with what you're calling the analysis paralysis, um, where people were forced to act quickly. And now I think there's more of a general understanding that we can be a little more laser targeting um, look at specific processes that can be improved today. You've already got a good standardized process in place. And a key one is um, verification, for sure. In every contact center I speak with has a, a standardized process, and it's pretty sequential, and it's, it's pretty easy for callers to navigate um, where you can target technology at automating that and still be providing a great caller experience one that's very nice and quick, and then set your agents up 
to get to work immediately on the heart of the matter of, of why the patient's calling. But I think, you know, we talked about this earlier. Navigation is the place to start in most places that I meet. Um, old style menus where you, you know, select one for this and two for that are very um, limited in their effectiveness because uh, first and foremost, callers often refuse to engage with them. Um, but secondly, they tend to be too narrow in their focus and people just, um, you know, are more comfortable saying what they need and knowing that their intent is understood. Um, if you can be successful in greeting a caller and understanding what their need is, then you've got a lot more opportunity to uh, automate either all or a part of that transaction and keep your agents really focused on uh, you know, empathic, working at the top of their skill set uh, things, right? So I guess that's just kind of a general contextual, what we're seeing in the marketplace is this ability to say, we've got this technology that can do so much, it can do so much, but that can be overwhelming. What can it do? What can we do today that will uh, impact our operations and give us a little bit of bandwidth to do all that analysis for larger and bigger use of those new technologies? Yeah. Yeah, yeah circling back to Keck Medicine of USC and our partnership with Patsy and Jennifer and, and other folks on the team, I think... You guys have really been a model for how to go about it. You've been, I think, impatient at the right times to really push performance and to make all of this collection of different new vendor relationships work and get installed on time and, and kind of get your money's worth. And at the same point, you've taken a really patient and long-term view about how to leverage technology where you can today with an eye towards constant and continuous improvement, uh, always looking to make things better. And it's just really been an honor to be partner, partnered with your organization and really looking forward to what we can all do together uh, in, the, in the days coming up. Thanks so much for being a part of this, Patsy and Jennifer. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you, Scott and Sheila. Yeah, thanks. And I, I'm guessing we have, well, I see that some questions have come in. Yeah, so thank you all for such a great presentation today. I'd love to hear your insights on some of the Q&A that's starting to populate. So let's get started with the first question. Can you talk more about QA and training for your agents? Yeah, sure. So the Access Center has had a quality assurance program that we maybe put a soft pause on while we were going live with our technologies. Um, but since we were since we've been live with our technologies, we have reinvigorated our quality assurance program. We've also built out our training team. So we have a team of three trainers who are listening to calls every day. Um, they bring calls to our weekly leadership meeting to calibrate so that the whole leadership team can listen to the calls, identify opportunities, celebrate wins. Um, here at Keck, we have the known standards. So the known standards stand for kind greeting, notice needs, own it, wow them, and next steps. That's what the known standards starts with. And that's basically what we have structured our QA program around. So um, agents are QA'd on a monthly basis. We've given agents the ability to QA themselves, score their own calls so that they can identify areas um, where they might want to grow. And our training team works very closely with our operations leadership group to ensure that we are providing our agents with the tools they need to better serve our patients. I think that's fantastic. And moving on to that next question here, are you guys using any speech analytics for quality assurance? Patsy, I can take that question. Yes, we are. Um, we do look through speech analytics through Calabrio. Um, we are on the Calabrio platform where we perform both quality assurance and workforce management. Um, through there, we are able to look through speech analytics. Um, also in conjunction with our weekly meetings, we're able to clarify uh, any questions um, that is out there about pronunciation. Um, and we're able to better our IVR system by making those changes um, to reflect 
And we also use the speech analytics uh, in our quality assurance, particularly to understand what patients are asking for. If we think of a key word, we want to see how many patients are asking for this new study that went live um, with our 1-800-USC-CARE. Um, we go ahead and look through all of our speech analytics to find um, that information. Wonderful. The next question we have for you guys is, you mentioned a CRM. Is the single pane of glass a Salesforce screen and is Parlance integrated with that? Go for it, Jen. Today, Parlance is integrated with our Salesforce uh, platform. So I think I had mentioned this a little bit earlier about what happens when a new call comes in to Salesforce with the agent uh, looking at the screen. So when a new call is prompted on Salesforce, we can actually see uh, if the patient has been verified, we can see all of the patient's information uh, So and, and everything that they have verified. So if they verified date of birth and they have verified their home address, uh, we can see that the, that the IVR has actually checked off those two things and we're looking for a third patient verifier. Or um, we can see if a patient is brand new to our system because it works along with Cerner to recognize our patients uh, to see if that patient is actually registered. So all of that information will come up through Salesforce. Um, it also will we also have our existing patients coming in with any previous calls identified. We use Salesforce to see um, if the patient has either, if this is the second time they're calling today regarding the same um, request, we can also see that via Salesforce. I think we have time for one more question. So how has staff reacted to the introduction of automation? If I can remember uh, back in 2021, the staff's reaction to an automated was one of any, um, which was, I'm afraid that this is going to take my job. And I think Scott, Sheila, you, you touched on this a little bit uh, prior. That is absolutely not the case. We probably need more agents than ever uh, because they are dealing with those calls that are truly meant for us. The patients that truly need our time and our patients to go through what their desired request is. And so it's actually been very fulfilling to the staff that they are getting calls that are truly meant for them. So I would say it was it's definitely positive in that case. Wonderful. That is all the time we have for today. So I want to thank Patsy, Jennifer, Scott, and Sheila for such an excellent presentation. And thank you to Parlance for sponsoring today's webinar. To learn more about the content presented today, please check out the resources section on your webinar console. And don't forget to fill out the post-webinar survey. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks, everybody.